Good day, everyone. The Holy Week or the road to the empty tomb begins with Jesus entering Jerusalem on what we celebrate as the Palm Sunday. And the subsequent seven days, which culminated in fulfilling the purpose for which Jesus came into this world, which is dying on the cross, taking upon himself the punishment of our individual sins which we celebrate with gratitude as Good Friday this week. And finally, Jesus' victory over death, which we celebrate as Easter. Now, Matthew records for us in 21st chapter of Matthew that Jesus calls two of his disciples. And when he calls two of his disciples, he gives them instructions on go to the village ahead of you at once and you will find a donkey tied there with her cold by her untie them and bring them to me if anyone says anything to you say that the lord needs them the lord needs them you know this is an incredible passage in the scripture the lord says if anyone objects just say the lord needs them you know the journey of palm sunday begins with a very practical matter of obtaining the necessary transportation so that Jesus can properly enter Jerusalem. Now, in Jesus' time, a donkey was a valuable possession for ordinary middle-class family. And as these disciples were untying the animal, its owner asked them what was going on. And the disciples respond as Jesus has instructed them, the Lord needs it to which the owner promptly and willingly releases the donkey and the colt beside her to the disciples' care. Now, biblical scholars believe that a donkey was a chosen uh, animal and it was intentionally done by Jesus as the Jewish people were well aware of the prophecy that was prophesied hundreds of years ago by prophet Zechariah who predicted that their king, the Jewish king, will come triumphant and victorious, but humble, riding on a donkey. Now, naturally, the Jewish audiences would have made this obvious connection. Now, today, we shall not focus on the festive parade, nor shall we focus on the prophecy of Zechariah, nor on the enthusiastic crowd or the exuberant disciples, not even on Jesus, but on the event that preceded the parade, untying a bound donkey and bringing it to Jesus because Jesus had need of it. You know, this obscure little prelude of untying the donkey, it seems insignificant part of a much bigger, flashier story. It perhaps a good metaphor for our lives and we can learn lessons from this short passage. Now untie the donkey and bring him to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs him. You know, incredible passage. You will find a donkey tied there with her cold by her untie them and bring them to me. No, I guess that us find ourselves tied down by something that limits our freedom or prevents us from fully realizing our potential. And this is where Jesus walks in as we are tied down to things that curtail our potential. Now, especially in the past year with the lockdowns and the restrictions and all the situations that we have faced, immaterial of our age or stage of life, we feel tied down to our fears. We feel tied down to our apprehensions that are within us, which make us hopeless um, amidst these ropes that are binding us and curtail our usefulness. Jesus, the anointed one, he comes to us. He wants to untie you and me. Now, you and I were created to stay, uh, we, we were not created to stay tied down to the post of the city gate. 
But you and I are designed and created to be untied and to be set free and to live glorifying God, our creator. You know, you may feel tethered to your current circumstances at this particular time, or you per perhaps feel tethered to your pain or to your loneliness. Today, Jesus is in town and he wants to release you from whatever is tying you down. Let me give you a few examples of things that tie us down in 21st century from which Jesus wants to untie us. You know, we could be tied down to our possessions or our comfortable way of life. There's nothing inherently wrong with things or possessions or things that we possess. But when our possessions tie us down, they distort our vision and kill our passion. Jesus said, store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break it or steal. You know, some of us are tied down to our addictions or our compulsions, addictions to alcohol or drugs or compulsive eating or other self-destructive behaviors which harm us spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, as well as uh, 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 spiritually. Now, when we are tied down by addictions or compulsions, we usually need others to help us, caring individuals who can untie us. You know, it's hard to do it by ourselves. And thank God there are professionals who are there to help us. There are men and women of God in our churches who can pray for us, pray with us and enable us to come out of these bondages that are binding us. So God wants to untie you, not only from things that tie you down, like your possessions and your security, but all your addictions and compulsions. You know, sometimes some people are tied down to their negative feelings towards others. You know, we experience fractured relationships leading to estrangement, intolerance, alienation, and separation. Now, for many, self-pride prevents us from freeing ourselves from the chains of jealousy or resentment or intense dislike. Now, today, Jesus is in town and he's sending his word, his servants, to untie you from these negative feelings or fractured relationships or est estrangement or intolerance or alienation or separation from your own loved ones. Now we find it impossible to forgive those who have hurt us. And this severely limits our ability to be loving to all persons as God intends and calls us to be. You know, in 19th century, there was an evangelist in America. His name was D uh, Dwight Lyman Moody. And he once commented, I have more trouble with myself than with any other person I've ever met. Now, Moody was self-aware of his own challenges. As we are self-aware of things that bind us down, we go to the, we, we run to Jesus and ask him to untie. Or when Jesus sends his servants, we allow them to untie us. You know, some of us are tied down or held back from passing parade of life by the burden of sins. Past sins are those that are present right now. You know, sin might be exciting when you want to be involved in it, but it not only leaves guilt, but it ties you down. It pecks you down to a, a, a place where you cannot move. And Jesus wants to untie you and he invites you. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden and are laboring. I will give you rest. Now, dear friend, now whatever is binding you down, it is the guilt of perhaps the wrong, uh, wrong choices that you have made that has led you into a lifestyle of debauchery or deceit or unfruitfulness or anger and resentment. Jesus wants to untie you this Palm Sunday. 
You know, another thing that can tie us down is laziness. Now, laziness are ropes that bind us and make us waste our time, our youth, our years, and our usefulness. May God help each of us to be untied from these things. You know, sometimes some people can be tied down by a profound sense of unworthiness that leads them to feelings of resignation or feelings of apathy or feelings of depression. We feel we are not good enough to succeed, nor we are strong enough to bear our responsibilities. We feel we are perhaps not accepted or accepted by God or accepted by others and certainly not by ourselves. Are we tied down to our disability or a profound sense of unworthiness? Jesus wants to untie you. You and I are created in the image of God with the express purpose that we can enjoy life on earth and glorify God in this one life that God has given to us. Are we tied down by our disabilities? You know, the story goes that there was a young woman whose name was Eleanor Young, and she was affected with polio and could not walk. And she was considered a, a cripple in the eyes of the world. But when she was about 13 years of age, a Chinese gentleman came to her church and spoke in broken English. She was in the United States attending a small church. And this unnamed Chinese man in broken English was narrating about how uh, the missionaries in China has changed his village as they brought Jesus to them. At the end of the service, this uh, pastor, this uh, guest speaker in broken English invited those who felt that God was leading them to be a missionary. And Eleanor Young walked to the front. Now, some congregants were embarrassed at the sight of this poor crippled girl walking up the aisle to dedicate her life as a missionary. In fact, one man went to the speaker and apologized for the only person who responded was a crippled girl who may not have clearly understood what this pastor or guest speaker was speaking. And to this, the Chinese speaker said, whom the Lord calls, he will use. And eventually, this young woman went to Bible college, applied to be a missionary. Some board, mission boards rejected her because of her disability. But eventually, she went to serve in Iran Jaya and served there for many years. And Eleanor Young ministered to the tribal people in Aranjaya. She learned the tribal language, helped in the translation of the Bible, saw the lives of so many people in this tribal community changed and were baptized. And she had to return to United States because of ill health. But when she got back to visit them, she was given a hero's welcome. And now these uh, tribal people, who once just roamed around without proper clothes, now were worshippers of Jesus, fully clothed. Eleanor, who was bound by infirm, her infirmity of bad legs, was loosened by Jesus to go to the place that God had planned for her, to lose those who were bound by ignorance and tradition and who were living in darkness. Now, what an amazing story. And today, Jesus wants to untie you. He wants to release you. Do you want to be untied? Now, never think what you have to offer to others isn't important. Whether it's your time or your talent or your money, even your every gift counts, however small or however great. God is asking, God isn't, uh, isn't asking you to save the world, but he's asking you to be faithful to him and let him use you for his glory. You know, the message that the Lord had for the donkey and for us is that the Lord needs you. The Lord needs you. And the Lord wants to set you free from whatever bondages that you are. And this is the message of the Palm Sunday. The Lord wants to ride on you. No, beside our own needs to be freed from such burdens, there's a much more profound and basic reason why we need to allow Jesus to untie from which we are being held back. That is, the Lord 
needs you. You know, just as Jesus needed that lowly donkey, so the Lord needs you. Each one of us has been created for a purpose. Each of us have diverse gifts and unique uh, talents. And they've been given to us by the God who created us, God who loves us. And we are called to be God's covenant partners in this recreating and upbuilding of God's kingdom. So wherever you are, whichever country you are in, whatever circumstances you are in, whatever past your past has been or whatever struggles you are going through, remember, the Lord needs you. And the Lord wants to untie you. We have work to do. The Lord needs us and doesn't want any part of us to be tied down by things that tie us down. Or our attitudes or behaviors or our imperfections that will prevent us from getting the work done. We are to be the Lord's hands and feet and voice to bring in the kingdom and to serve others in Jesus' name. You know, it's so natural for us to be focusing on our, circum uh, on our weaknesses or, <clears throat> or our current circumstances. You now, God's side in this covenant partnership is total and complete acceptance of us. No matter what your past is, no matter what your failures are, God's side in this covenant partnership is total and complete acceptance of us. We may not be worthy in terms of deserving God's love, and none of us are, because we are all unworthy. But he dispenses his great love towards us. The Bible says in that when we were yet sinners, God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son to die for us. The grace of God in Christ is lavished upon each of us. What we have to do is wake up and accept God's forgiveness, God's grace. The Lord needs you. You are important to the kingdom of God. Whichever town or city, however big or small it is, you are important for the kingdom of God. You may feel inadequate, but the Bible says he hath made us able ministers. You're made an able minister. Jesus has chosen you. He shed his blood to wash away your sins, to take upon himself the punishment that rightly belongs to you and me. And he died in your place and my place. Jesus has chosen you. He wants to anoint you. And then, along with the anointing, he wants to appoint you for a greater cause. Greater, much greater cause than you are currently involved in. God wants you on your team, uh, on his team. God wants you on his team. Do you want to allow God to untie you? Now we can respond in three ways. First, the very first way we can respond is by humble obedience. Just like the disciples, when they were asked to untie the donkey and bring it, we can respond by humble obedience and say, Lord, here I am. I'm letting you untie me. Use me the way you want, it, want, me, want to use me. We can respond with reckless abandoned worship, abandoned worship. Abandon worship. Like the disciples when they threw their cloaks or their clothes on the colt for Jesus to sit on it and, the, and, the, and carpeted the road uh, with the palm branches as Jesus entered the city. We can respond with reckless abandon worship. Like the crowds, we can shout Hosanna, waving the palm branches and singing with joyful songs of praise. We need more spontaneous joy in our life. You know, these days, joy is in short supply. There's a lot of happiness which depends upon the happenings around us. And the happenings around us are not very good these days. With wars, with, uh, uh, with the pandemic, and with the uncertainty because of wars and pandemic, 
even at an individual level, every country, uh, the downstream effects of these two situations, war in Ukraine, as well as the uh, two years of pandemic, it doesn't look to be very promising. But the Lord wants to bless you with joyful songs of praise on your lips. Because you have allowed the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, to ride on you, recognizing that he needs you. First, we can res respond by humble obedience. Second, we can respond by reckless abandoned worship. And thirdly, and most importantly, we can respond with prayer. We can pray to the prayer hearing and prayer answering Jesus and his father, the heavenly father who created you and me. We can pray for faith. We can pray for strength. We can pray for courage to respond to the call of God. You know, the great preacher, Philip Brooks, he remarked on prayer he, he, and he said, I do not pray for a lighter load, but I pray for a stronger back. May God help each of us to give us a stronger back. And we need to surrender ourselves, no matter what our fears and trepidations or insecurities are. You know, this, uh, what needs untying in your life today? Only you know that. Only you can begin the process. God wants to untie us and wants us to be used for his kingdom. And he wants to remove all of the excess baggage from your life and my life. So that now you and I can allow Jesus to ride on us. Let me share, you, uh, share with you a story of a man called Jetson Van de Venter. His name is Jetson Van de Venter. Now, Jetson was a preacher, and at one time, he struggled between developing his talents in the field of art and going into or going into full-time evangelistic work. Now, at a pivotal hour in his life, Jetson surrendered all and became an evangelist. He became a pastor. And as he surrendered, God had hidden a song in his heart. And he penned this beautiful song, All to Jesus I surrender. I freely give him. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. So Jetson wrote this song, and the story doesn't end there. Jetson went, they went to priest throughout the United States, in England, in Scotland, and along the way became a friend and a mentor to a young man who was just starting out in ministry. And this young man would later describe Van de Venter as kind, deeply spiritual gentleman who influenced his early uh, preaching career. And that man's name is Billy Graham, one of the greatest evangelists the world has seen. And certainly one of the greatest evangelists or in 20th century. A song in his heart of surrender led him to penning the words, All to Jesus, I surrender, which became the theme song for Billy Graham's Crusades. So today, on this Palm Sunday, or in this season of Palm Sunday, I want to herald the message to you that the Lord wants to untie you. From whatever is binding you and whatever is trying to hold you back and tether you to the city post, do you want to surrender to him? You want to surrender to him. The robes that bind you and obey the call so that he can give you the robes of righteousness and the hope that never fades away immaterial of the circumstances that you face. May God enable you to have his presence, his grace, so that you can allow Jesus to untie you from whatever is binding you today, whether it is addictions, whether it is fears, whether it is insecurities, whether it is resentment, whether it is 
fear of the future or the past failures. Let God untie you and make you understand and realize and experience the fullness and the power in the words. The Lord needs you. May God bless you and may God strengthen you so that you would be filled with his presence and experience his love.